A couple of months ago, my wife bought me for my birthday this awesome Bosch 5-inch Random Orbit Sander. This thing definitely is a huge step up from the DeWalt little handheld palm sander I was using previously. So since I upgraded my sanding device, I decided it was time to upgrade the sandpaper that I use as well. So this is my current sandpaper drawer. As you can see, it's kind of a mess. And it's filled with just kind of like discount sandpaper. Usually what I would do is I'd buy sandpaper in bulk at the woodworking trade show. And then that's how I would supply it. Now, this paper is okay. It's not the best though. And the biggest issue I have with this sandpaper is it leaves lots of swirl marks no matter how careful you are with sanding. Recently, I watched a YouTube video that compared several different sandpapers and their effectiveness. And one sandpaper really stood out above and beyond the rest. And that sandpaper was this 3M Cubitron 2 Extract Mesh Sandpaper. Even though you have about half the surface area that's actually abrasive, this mesh and all of these holes in here help your sander, if you have a good sander with dust collection, remove all of that dust from the work surface and it eliminates the, um, the risk of getting swirls in your workpiece. I'll link the video up in the cards up, up above in case you want to see how this experiment was done. So when I first started out I bought a cheap variety pack off of Amazon.com I'll leave a link down in the description below if you'd like to check that out. And I wanted to test these uh, sanding discs myself and I'll be honest with you, I was blown away with how easy it was to sand my pieces and, and the, the quality of the surface left after sanding. And at that point the only thing I had changed was the sandpaper. When I upgraded to this beast here, the ease of sanding and the quality of the finish improved even more. And so, in my opinion, the combination of the 3M Cubitron 2 Extract Sandpaper with this Bosch GET65-5 sander is about as good as you can get when it comes to fine sanding and finish sanding of your work pieces. But that's not the purpose of this video. In this video, I would like to organize my sandpaper drawer. I recently took advantage of a sale on taylortools.com. They had a great sale going on for the 3M Extract sandpaper. So I bought 50 packs of every single grit I would need from start to finish on a project. I'm not sure how many different grades I have here. It's at least six or seven. Um, I have 80, 120, 150, 180, 220, 240 and 320 for sure. So what I intend to do today is get all of this sandpaper here organized and installed in this drawer and have it be organized in a way that I know where each grit is and I can easily grab it and I don't end up with a big pile mess like I've got going on here. So the way I'm going to start is I'm going to start at the computer uh, with Fusion 360 because I'm going to use my 3D printer to execute this vision. When I was coming up with ideas for this storage system, I could decide to store my sandpaper either horizontally or vertically. One thing I noticed is that since this is hook and loop sandpaper, when stacked, the grip from one sheet of sandpaper tends to want to grip on the hook and loop surface on the back of another sheet. And so I felt like if I stored them vertically, I would be constantly fighting that friction. So I decided to design these to lay flat horizontally. I can grab the top sheet off of the stack and not worry so much about the sheet sticking together as I'm pulling them apart. My print bed is not huge. It's a normal size print bed, about 220 by 220, and so I couldn't design anything that was too big. So what I did is I decided to make this modular, and I designed dovetails into the, the storage system so they can interlock with each other, and you can add and subtract as needed depending on 
the number of trays that you would need for your particular system. This is designed for five inch sandpaper. So if you would need a larger design, you would have to scale it up in your 3D modeling software of choice, but it's definitely doable. So this is the first design that I came up with. Um, when I put it in my slicer, I realized that it was going to use a lot of filament and it was going to take a very long time to print. So I went back to the drawing board and I reduced some wall thicknesses and then the big thing that I did was I kind of skeletonized it by adding all of these holes in the print to reduce the amount of time it would take to print and more importantly reduce the amount of filament. I actually reduced the amount of filament used by about two-thirds so that's a little bit more reasonable so I should be able to get about seven of these out of one roll of filament now instead of uh, the original design where I would only be able to get about three of these out of a roll of filament. Today I'll be printing these trays with my longer LK4X. This is the newest printer I have in my arsenal and I have to say I really like it a lot. The thing that I like the most about this printer is that it is designed as an entry-level printer but it already comes pre-installed with the extra features that most hobbyists find that they want after they've played around with their entry-level printer. Some of those features include a filament runout sensor, automatic bed leveling, a PEI coated spring steel print bed, silent stepper motors, a direct drive extruder, and a 3.5 inch full color touchscreen interface. This printer is really good and it's a great value. If you'd like to learn more about this printer, I will link a review video up in the cards and I will also leave a link down in the description below where you can find out more and possibly buy one of your own. So as you can see, this tray that I designed printed out flawlessly. Now, I am the first one to tell you that I'm just happy to be able to design things in Fusion 360. I am by no means a master of elegant design, and this design is a little bit clunky and has a lot of wasted space. However, it does serve the purpose that I have designed it for, and so, um, let me gather it with some others that I've printed off and let's see how well uh, it works out in my sandpaper drawer. Okay, well, time to get rid of this crappy sandpaper. Like I said before, it's not horrible. Some of it's worse than others. I mean, some of it is the same brand and some are worse than others, even in, within the same brand. So, like, both of these are Norton and these are way worse than these. Um, and then there's some Norton Gold, which is a little bit better. Typical Diablo stuff. But anyway, I'm, I'm just going to set this stuff aside. A lot of this is 6 inch paper too, which I have a 6 inch sander, but it's a little rough around the edges. And out of all my sanders, it is the worst. It, putting swirls in my work so it's pretty pretty much only useful for like stripping finish off of old furniture or floors or whatever okay so here is the one of the units right here I've printed about I've printed four right now my goal is to get eight complete, so I designed them to go right in here, and 
They snap right into place, the little dovetails. As you can see, there's you know dovetails integrated into the base, and it just helps register them and snap together, make them snap together. Now, I knew I was going to run into this issue where my dovetails are going to interfere with the side of the drawer, but that's okay. It's as simple as taking some tin snips or or wire cutters or something and just snipping off the excess dovetail. I'll get to that in just a second. Well, there's probably a hundred different ways you could cut these off, but I'm just going to use my usual 3D printing side cutters here. Get in there and just snip it. Like that. And now it slides into place. Okay, I've got another four printing right now. For the time being, I'm going to go ahead and fill these guys up. Let's start with my 80. Next 120. Next is 150. And finally, for now, got 180. Once I'm done printing the other ones, I'll finish installing the remaining discs that I have. And then I'll organize the rest of this box. I, I will have a little bit of space left over um, for important things like sanding drums and my eraser style cleaner and other things. And if I have to dedicate another drawer to other miscellaneous sanding supplies, you know, so be it. But we'll see here in just a moment. So here's all my sandpaper laid out. I ended up printing nine of these and you see how they interlock perfectly with each other and I did size them so they would fit perfectly in this drawer. So if you decide to print these out for yourself, your mileage may vary based on the size of your drawer. They are just over three inches tall, so make sure that whatever drawer you put them in, will, it'll be able to close once they're installed. But here I have my 80, 120, 150, 180, 220, 240, 320, and then a couple of spots here, just some of my cheaper sandpaper. I've got 60s right here and 100s right here. I decided to lay them, you know, the grit side down so I don't need labels or anything on any of these cubes. Um, you know, th because having the label side up on the sandpaper, I can just see right here which grit is which. And then for used sheets, I'm going to go ahead and just place them on the very top of um, each of their respective locations. So they're the first ones that I grab until they're used up. And then at that point, I will just toss them. I hope you enjoyed this quick video of a small organization issue I've been having for years, and I think I've finally got it licked. If you have a 3D printer and you'd like to print your own, sandpaper organization trays like the ones shown in this video. I'll put a link to the file uh, down in the description below. It'll be on Thingiverse. It'll be a free download. So feel free to download it, uh, print it, modify it, do whatever you want with it. If you don't have a printer and you're thinking about getting one, the longer LK4X is definitely a great printer for beginners and for experienced hobbyists alike.
Once again, I will also leave a link down in the description below where you can go to get some more information about the printer and purchase one if you feel so inclined. Thank you everybody for sticking around to the end of the video. I have many more product reviews and many more projects coming down the pipeline. If you'd like to stay up to date on what I'm doing, go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any future uploads to this channel. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.